Welcome back inside the State Champ Studios for another edition of Hockey Time. I'm Jonathan Kidd along with Sean Belize. And Sean, you get plenty of rest over the weekend after uh, all the games we've done for Game Time Live? Not enough, but uh, no, it was awesome. Uh, John, say it every year, nothing like that experience. I mean, what you see on the ice, I mean, the, the competition on the ice, the outstanding people of Trenton putting on another unbelievable uh, showcase. Uh, really, bravo, can't say enough, but... As always, you know what, John, I want to keep the focus on the ice. Boy, did we see some good hockey while we were out there. And we saw a lot of our familiar friends at the MIHL Showcase. We had a nice conversation with our buddy uh, Jimmy Young. I talked with Cody English from the MHSA. You know, and shout out to our Rock and Rye Robbie. You know, he did those interviews for our Fago three stars of the game. He did really well. He, I was so proud of the kid. He's a, he's a great guy. You know, he's all fired up. I, I can relate a little bit to that. And uh, that's the, the thing about this game, though, John, is – I think the game of hockey evokes more passion than any other sport. I'm biased, no doubt about that, but it's easy to get all fired up about this game. One more person that we saw at the showcase, I see him every time in Trenton, is Tornado Allen. Yes, uh, it, it's always a pleasure to see him. I, I got a, uh, a chance to take a, a couple of selfies with him. And, of course, uh, the fine folks in the hospitality room, you got the fix. Uh, Rebecca, it's a pleasure to meet you. Same time next year, and, and I can count on you, right? I can count on that. But, no, hey, just a, just a fantastic time. And uh, we, we saw four great games that we broadcast, plus all the other games that, you know, we were all running around from rink to rink. Just a great time out in Trenton. State Champs Hockey Time is presented by our friends at the Alta Equipment Company. And let's recap the games that we streamed last weekend. Let's talk about the first one between Cranbrook and Traverse City Central. This was a 3-2 to two game for Cranbrook. Oh, I'll tell you what, tip of the cap to the Trojans. They they worked really hard. You know, they're, they're shorthanded. They had 14 players, and, and they worked their tail off. But in the end, got to give Cranbrook credit. They found a way. I know it hasn't been an easy season for Cranbrook either, and they've had to, you know, endure some tough injuries injuries, but uh, a good way to get us started on Friday, John. Our next game that we streamed was East Grand Rapids and UAD Jesuit. You know, we have talked about Byron Center and Grand Rapids Catholic Central. East Grand Rapids, they did make it to the state title game last year. They came out on fire in this one, and they beat UAD Jesuits 8-3. to That first period was awesome. You know, the talent on display, it was like we needed oxygen up in the booth. I think we all needed oxygen. How great was it? I had other players who shall be remain nameless. I had other players come up to me from other teams and go, how good was that first period? True story. Re really, truly happened. So as you mentioned, John, EGR uh, took control of that game. That is a good team, a well-coached team. Uh, Coach Newton's done a fantastic job with the Pioneers. And you got them up to 10 now in your newest ranking. Had to do that, John. I mean, you know, when, when you – Make a statement like that. We have to practice what we preach. I mean, everybody's watching you. You play two high-caliber opponents like UDJ and Howell, and you win those games, and you win them the way that you won those games. You have to bump them up quite a bit. Uh, the pressure's on, and certainly the Pioneers answered the bell. Next up, we had number one Detroit Catholic Central taking on number three Houghton. This was a battle. Catholic Central does it again, you know, with their depth. They won two to one. Yeah, you know what? Uh, liked Houghton a lot. I, I think that Houghton is every bit as good as last year and maybe better. I'm serious. There, There's a lot to like about that team. They gave everything they had. Uh, I had a chance to talk to Mike after the game. Nothing to hang their head about. They're, this is going to be a learning experience for them and say, you know what? We know that we have to maybe even give even more to get up to that summit in Division Three, and, and for Catholic Central, I think it's good for them too, John. You know, they got pushed. They had to play hard in that third period, and they did. But I, I've said it once. I've said it a thousand times. When you can roll like that and, and you throw out the dangerous players that they have on all four of those lines, boy, it makes things easy. And I'll tell you what. I feel really good about Matthew being on our list as well. I, I thought he was outstanding in net for Catholic Central. Our last game that we streamed on Game Time Live was Trenton taking on Marquette. Trenton got a goal late in the third period that tied up and went into the shootout. Sean's favorites. Not really. He doesn't like the shootouts. But it did go into the shootout. Will Barrett nets the game winner 3-2. to two. Yeah. I wish we'd play 3-on-3 three three for five minutes. But listen, no, a tremendous game. I'm not... 
surprised in either way. Like, that's one of those games, if Marquette won via the shootout, I wouldn't be surprised. If Trent won uh, via the shootout, which they did, I'm not surprised. Those are two really good teams. And, and John, I I said it last week, I'm going to repeat it. I feel very good about it. I think they both might, might be in the key and operative word, might be number two in their respective divisions. I think you could make an argument for Marquette being number two in their division. I think Orchard Lake might have something to say about that. I think East Grand Rapids might have to say something about that. But I think that Trenton definitely is number two in division two and um, not surprised at it. And, And you know what? I like to see the guys that we've known for a while, especially those downriver goaltenders. Ryan Rainey had such a fantastic weekend, and and Miklos had uh, a tremendous game for them. Uh, Nice to see those guys that have kind of been on our list the last couple of years say we're seniors now, and and, and we're going to carry the bellhorn, if you will. So tremendous game, not surprised at all. Mikos is in our top 10 for the wall word, and he did get the Fago number one star in the game. And he, of course, he had to say Rock and Rye was his favorite flavor. Yeah, you know what? There are so many darn good flavor, flavors, but I, I'm a Rock and Rye guy as well. I don't know, that new orange one, the Orange Dreaming or whatever, that's pretty darn good because, you know, it brings that. I don't know, like that orange cream soda flavor. We could sit here and talk Fago for the next 10 minutes. But um, no, it, listen, tremendous game. And as so many of the games were, I, John, I need to like reiterate, I think the committee did a great job of matching the teams up this weekend. I really do. They did a tremendous job of matching the teams up. Saw so many evenly matched games. And, uh, you know, just a, an absolute bravo to everybody down there. And let's talk quickly about some of the teams that performed well at the MIHL Prep Hockey Showcase. Riverview gave her a shard. What happened? They beat Forest Hill Central on Thursday, and then they shut out the Sioux on Saturday. And they're now number 20 in your ranking. I think they needed to have a couple wins like that to maybe – punch in the door they've been a mainstay in our top 25 for years now I've said it once I've said it a thousand times I think Ricky's done a great job with them and and but they needed a couple of signature wins and it's great they're on an 8-0-2 run right now but as you mentioned when you knock off two teams that were top 25 teams in in, in succession like that you can't keep them out, Johnny. You just can't. Let's talk about a few other teams from the showcase. How about Heartland and, and Brother Rice? Yeah, I, I mean, let me start with Brother Rice. Does it surprise anybody that they're trending in the right direction this late in the season? It shouldn't. I, I think Coach Chappett's done a fantastic job for so many years getting them to go like this during the course of the year. And you know what? I, I could say the same thing about uh, Rick Gadwa, who kindly joined us uh, uh, during one of our broadcasts. I mean, that is a good team. And, and when you go out and, and what they've been doing lately, John, I put this in the rankings. Uh, they've knocked off four ranked teams in their five-game winning streak and Howell and Marquette and Bay Reps and, and De La Salle. Boy, oh boy, that's that's getting ready for playoff. I'm going to tell you who I love. And I told you last week I really wanted to see these. I loved Hancock. Mm -hmm. Boy, I like that team. I like the way they play. I I, I think they're a couple players that – um, we're going to be talking about for years. One a freshman, uh, one a sophomore that I think we're going to be talking about for years. I really liked Hancock. I, I, I got a chance to see them a lot on the first day in, in their win, and I like that team a lot. You got them number nine in your latest rankings. And, and quickly, how about the game on Saturday between number one, Detroit Catholic Central, and now number three, Byron Center. That was another close one for CC, and they pulled out with a 3-1 to one victory. Both teams are going to be fine. I wouldn't worry the slightest bit about Byron Center. Not at all. That is a legitimate team. They've shown it all year long. I, you know, Obviously, everybody's going to talk about Froisland. Everybody's going to talk about Pratt. Everybody's going to talk about their goaltending. I think what they showed people is that they're a very good team team across the board there's a reason why they're the favorite in division two this year it's not time for picks yet or anything like that that time is coming soon but I think it'll take a Herculean effort to knock off Byron Center in this playoff I think this is a team that has knocked on the door the last couple of years and came oh so close last year as we remember and I I, I think they're ready to kick the door in what can I say about Catholic Central that I haven't already said and and I say that with respect 
they've done such a great job of building this up into something special, something that that I think represents the state so well. And, and they they do it in a classy manner. There's a reason why they've been number one for so long and haven't been beaten by anybody in state in two years, almost two years. And how about Brighton? They're up to number five in your rankings after beating the Notre Dame Academy in Wisconsin and then a big win over the Bay Reps. You know what? It's their time of year, isn't it? Yeah. You know, if you remember last year... They were they, struggling at this time. They kind of put it together a, after, you know, a tough loss. I, I think it's a Richard, right? Yeah. A, a, and they put it together after that. But right now, maybe they're peaking early, but that is a really good team. Obviously, we talk about uh, Duff for good reason. We talk about Petit for good reason. We talk about Levi for good reason. I'm going to tell you what, one of the best players in the state is on their blue line in Watkins. If you haven't seen that kid yet, he has been a force. Uh, ever since he came back, I think you saw Brighton go like this. And they got a freshman on that top line with Petit and Duff. Yeah, and, and I mean, to me, that, that you know, when, when, you, when you have guys of that caliber, they're going to be tough to beat. So, yeah, Brighton, um, yeah, Brighton is Brighton. And lastly, Orchard Lake St. Mary's, you have them now number two in your top 25. You know what? I, again, I, I think I have to look at what they've done recently. When you knock off Trenton, when you knock off U of D, when you knock off Powers and you knock off Byron Center in a short amount of time, you have to give respect to that. And, and you know, we've had Orchard Lake up in the top 10 most of the year, but I think to knock off those teams in such a short amount of time, you have to put the Eaglets up there. Um, you know, that that is another team. As I said, they're going to be very dangerous in Division Three. Um, you know, Houghton and Orchard Lake and Hancock and Marquette and Flint Powers and Sioux. I, to me, John... Division three is the, the, the division of intrigue this year. It really is. To see Sean's top 25 rankings, you can head over to our website at statechampsnetwork.com. Sign off for our Warrior Hockey Player of the Year update. So, Sean, we've been talking about it. There's always been changes after the MIHL Prep Hockey Showcase, and it's going to be happening again this year as we're going to be putting on Gunnar Weber from the Bay City Wolves and Will Barrett from Trenton to the top ten. You know what? It, it's interesting. I, I think there were some other names that were thrown out there as well, guys that stepped up during the tournament. But in the guys that we talked to, John, those two were the consensus, and I can make a strong argument for not only both of them, but some of the other guys that maybe aren't on the list. But again, John, there's a reason why we put the criteria out there. When you look at that criteria, these guys check the boxes. And it isn't just what the coaches are saying. It isn't just what you think, Johnny, or what I think. It's it's all of it, especially when you look at their criteria. These guys check the boxes, and I say it every single year, and I'm going to keep hammering it. When you're at a showcase with so many eyes on you and so many cameras on you and so many scouts out there and other of, of your teams watching you and, and you put up performances like these guys do, it, it counts for a little something extra. So certainly a special year for both uh, the Wolves and for the Trojans, but uh, these guys uh, kind of leading the way and I, I think two welcome additions to our list. You can cast your vote for Gunner and Will at our website at statechampsnetwork.com. The leading vote getter will never get removed from the top 10. And that was our Warrior Hockey Player of the Year update. All right, sign off for our Coaches Corner, brought to you by our friends at the Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association. I'm joined today by the head coach at East Grand Rapids High School, Chris Newton. Chris, welcome to Hockey Time. So last week, you know, East Grand Rapids was featured on State Champs Game Time Live with you guys' game against UAD Jesuit. Just talk about that experience that we were able to live stream your game and get the win for you guys. Yeah, it was uh, it was awesome to, uh, you know, have the extra cameras there and then go back and watch it. Obviously, we got good results from the game, but... I think everyone was back in the hotel that night, and you know, seeing what uh, Sean and everyone was saying about our team, and then you watched, and um, it was just a, it was a great event. We're uh, thankful you guys to come out there and, and and do that for us, and being at the uh, Trend Showcase, you know, such a great event, um, and then to get the live streams, it was uh, was great for us. So we really appreciate that. 
And just talk about your guys' season so far. You know, you guys are up to 10th now in Sean's uh, top 25. Yeah, it's been a good season. We've had some uh, some tough losses, but I think that only makes you better down the road. And as long as you learn those, learn some lessons from your losses, uh, turn them into positives. And I think we've done that so far, and uh, we continue to grow. But it's been uh, it's been good. You know, we're on pace for twenty wins, so hopefully we can accomplish that. We have a huge game on Friday versus uh, Forest Hills Central. Basically, three league games left. We win those three league games, we'll be able to clinch our. Uh, our conference. So that's, that's first on our list of uh, goals. And talk about the quality of West side hockey in Michigan. Obviously you guys were in the division three final last year, Byron center yeah. made the division two final. So, you know, just talk about the quality of play. It's, it's amazing out here. Like every game is like a rivalry game because we're so close and we play each other, you know, so much. It's like, there's no days off on the West side, especially when you're talking about teams like Byron, the Forest Hills schools, no matter no matter what anyone's record is, Christian, anyone can beat anyone on any given day. It's just a battle. And you're in these league games and you're like, oh, my gosh, there's no breaks here. You know, even teams that are under 500, they'll give you your best game. So you got to be on your toes and it prepares you for, you know, the postseason for sure. Talk about last season, that run. You guys made it all the way to the state championship game. You know, a lot of people call it a Cinderella run. You guys were near 500 at the start you made it all the way there yeah it was uh it was awesome i think we just we got hot at the right time but we were doing a lot of the right things and we have a uh you know a tradition at our school that you know i've been at other schools and uh our kids just really want to win they want to do the best you know for their families in front of their peers and there's just a when it comes playoff time there's a different atmosphere and uh intensity and attention to detail that our kids bring out and it's uh it's been good for us and you know we got to earn it this year again but i think that uh when it's crunch time east grand rapids kids step up there's tradition of winning here mm-hmm. and uh you know we try to carry that over into hockey for sure now it's going to be the 10 year anniversary of farmington winning the Division Three state title. Just talk about that special moment. You're on your dad's staff at that time. Just how cool was that? Yeah, that was uh, that was a Cinderella story for sure. Obviously, uh, you know, another team that just got hot at the right time. John Letherman, who's, you know, in the ECHL with the Toledo Walleye, he was, he was unbelievable. I mean, I wouldn't tell many people to go watch uh, some of my old high school hockey games, but if you can find the film of Johnny and some of those playoff games, I've never seen goaltending like it. I mean, especially the Cranbrook, Cranbrook game. The Cranbrook we beat Cranbrook game. in the in the quarterfinals, and I think I think the save count gets bigger every time you tell the story. But it was something like sixty two saves or something, and uh, yeah, that's that's something I'll I'll never I'll never forget. And it was uh, you know, and then still coaching now, I'm still chasing that feeling. You know, that's. Uh, and I got, you know, Grant Newton, who's on my staff. He was a player on that team. You know, we're trying to uh, we're trying to chase that again. So we know how hard it is and everything has to go in, in the right way. You got to get the bounces. But, um, you know, as long as you believe and you try to go out there and earn it, there's always a chance for any team, not just us. But I think that's what that run taught me is if you believe in each other and you want to go out there and get that, anyone can do it. You just need to – just need to buy in and, and believe in each other and, and good things will happen. Thank you very much, uh, Chris, for taking the time here on Hockey Time and thank you for all your guys' support over the years. Yeah, thank you guys. We really appreciate the live stream and everything you guys do for uh, Michigan High School Hockey and uh, we hope to see you around in the playoffs soon. All right, so that was our Coaches Corner brought to you by your friends at the Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association. Joining us on Hockey Time is the Director of Hockey at the MHSA, Cody Inglis. Cody, welcome to Hockey Time. Jonathan, thanks for having me. So this is your 11th year as the Director of Hockey. How special is it for you to do this? You know, it's a joy. It's a blessing. I am uh, privileged beyond belief to, to be a part of this game. This game has given me so much in my life. And to be able to administer it at the highest level and make sure that we're enhancing it every day for kids. and. Uh, having my own kids involved yeah. in the sport is it's just every day it's uh it's great and especially being here at the rink uh nothing no place better 
And talk about the growth of high school hockey over the years that you've seen. Yeah, you know, I've been involved in this game for as a player, as a coach, as an administrator, and now the director of hockey. So I've seen, and it's going back all the way to the 80s, where it truly was uh, a place kind of for sort of kids to get more experience. Now it's truly a place where kids can have fun and enjoy playing with their teammates and peers and classmates, but also get to the next level, which I think has uh, really benefited from our great coaching uh, around the state. One of the things you see time and time again is kids are being coached so much better. Kids are so much uh, better at skills and skating and things like that. And I think that's just a, a, a credit to everything that our coaches do every day with kids. Sean and I have talked on Hockey Time about all these showcases. Yeah. Obviously the MIHL yeah. KLA Showcase, the Chelsea Showcase, the North South, yeah. and obviously here at the MIHL Prep yeah. Showcase. We love it when it's you get all these teams here for a particular weekend. It's so cool because you, you they, I think the showcases do such a good job of matching up teams, right? Mm -hmm. And it shows you, uh, that again, great hockey is being played at all corners of our state. It's so cool to be able to see here, and, and Trenton, the MIHL, does, does such a good job. But also, like you said, Chelsea and North-South, and I've been able to experience a lot of those throughout the, the season. Now, in a couple weeks, the playoffs are starting. Oh, they Just do. remind our audience. When does the pairings be announced for, yeah, the, for so, the regionals? So February 11th is the date uh, that we'll announce those and release those brackets. Second year now that we've uh, seeded the entire region. So we're excited about that, that these regular season games mean a lot, right? The, the, the play that they're doing, every single game means something. And that's something we weren't always able to say before, but now they are. And then February 19th is when we start the action on the ice. And uh, that that's when regionals start and kick off. And uh, then it's... Uh, Win or go home, as we say, right? Yeah, and just talk about how special it is at USA Hockey Arena in early March for the state championship. Yeah, I, I met with Mike Henry, uh, general manager, and his staff just the other day, and uh, it just being around the rink, right? The smell and, and being there, you, it's such a, a great experience, and you, you think high school hockey when you're there, you think USA hockey when you're there, obviously, but we're uh, so blessed to have a willing partner that really opens up their doors and rolls out the red carpet for us. We truly want to make that experience a great one for kids, and that's been so neat to be able to be there. And uh, it's just they're such a willing partner for us. Thank you very much, Cody, for joining us on Hockey Time. I appreciate all your support for Hockey Time and the MHSA as well. I just want to tell you, you and, and Sean do such a great job. I'm a regular watcher every week. I can't tell you the promotion, the benefit that you give to our game is so great and so greatly appreciated. So keep up the great work. All right, well, thank you very much, Cody. Attention State Champs Nation! Applications are being accepted right now for the Detroit Athletic Club Foundation's Male and Female Michigan High School Athlete of the Year Awards. If you are a recognized first-team All-State athlete in a sport or projected to be one this school year, if you have at least an overall 3.0 GPA, and if you have demonstrated leadership through the school or as a community volunteer, we want you to apply. Six male and six female student athletes will be nominated and each awarded $1,000 towards college expenses. The winners will receive $5,000 each. The 27th Athlete of the Year Awards will take place at the Detroit Athletic Club the evening of Monday, June 3rd and streamed live on the State Champ Sports Network. Nomination applications will be accepted through Friday, March 31st and this is important. You cannot be nominated if you do not apply. Download the application today at DACAthleteoftheyear.com That's DACAthleteoftheyear.com all right, welcome back into Hockey Time. And this has become a tradition for a few years now out here in Trenton. Always great to catch up with one of the legends, not just in the UP, but really across the MHSAA hockey scene. I can feel him blushing right now because one of the reasons we get along is he doesn't take himself very seriously either. But very pleased to say my friend, Jimmy Young. Jimmy, it's always a pleasure. My pleasure as well, Sean, to see you guys again, Mike, Johnny, the, the crew over there. I mean, I've said it before, you're going to bust too. What you guys done for high school hockey is phenomenal. You put it on the map. I told you before, guys like me, we're just kind of in the weeds, but it's always fun to come down and see you guys. It's, it's a blast. And, Mike, I got you taken care of for your quadruple header. I just want, <laughs> I just want to get that out there, okay? <laughs> He brought the inhalers and the no-dos, right? Uh, and more. <laughs> hey, listen, this is my first chance seeing Hancock, and, and you and I, for the benefit of people out there, Jimmy and I talk multiple times a week, you know, talk as friends, talk about the game. 
I really like this Bulldog team. For a lot of people downstate, this is the first chance they got to see this Bulldog team play. Hey, hockey's back in Hancock, Jimmy. Well, you know, uh, Pete Rule, a magnificent job. First year coach, but he's a hockey lifer. Uh, Jeff Mick is on his staff. Kyle Hosworth from Scott Mickus's uh, staff. Scott Mickus did a good job there. Left some quality people there. Pete's come in. Uh, the the You've seen him. It, it, nothing fancy, but that's a solid team. And like all UP teams, three lines. Four, four defensemen. Kilpla, in my opinion, even last year as a freshman this year. I mean, he's smooth. Mm. Mikulinov playing good hockey. This is a team that we don't talk about that much, but 15 wins after today's game. They, they, I mean, they're just solid. They don't put you asleep or you, while you, but just fun to watch. We haven't got to see much of Houghton being up there in the UP. What can you say? Micah Stipich, f marvelous job. Again, his coaching staff, two former NHLers, Jeff Finger and Brett Peterson. I mean, uh, well coached. Not much has changed from him to Corey. It was probably one of the smoothest transitions you've ever seen. But again, they play a solid, solid hockey game. Good three lines. Lee, outstanding goaltender. You don't mention his name that much because he makes everything look so routine. But make no mistake about it. <clears throat> Jimmy Young, the voice of the UP and certainly one of the voices of high school hockey, regardless of where you are in this state, kindly joining us on Hockey Time. Uh, Dan Giacchino and, and Calumet, this is one of those transitional years. You know Dan is a heck of a coach. What do you see out of the Copper Kings, Jimmy? I did their game a few nights ago in, against Hancock. Uh, trailing one nothing, tied 1-1. Uh, trailing 2 nothing, tied 2-2. Then a kind got away from i seen them earlier this week, Tuesday. That's the first time I've seen them since right before Christmas. Totally different team. Yeah. Let's make no mistake. Dan picked a young team. I think one senior, Cam Anderson. It might, might be two. He picked that team knowing they're going to take some lumps. But I could see in a month and a half the improvement. They're going to, that's a good team. They're playing for next year in, in March, obviously. But yeah, you had so many kids you lost over the last three, four years. You know, when you build it from the ground up, it takes time, but they're not an easy out. Talk about Marquette a little bit. Yeah, we've seen a little bit of Marquette, and I tell you, me and Sean have both fallen in love with Moyer and Reapy. What can you tell us about Marquette? I've seen them twice. I got them twice down the road with uh, Houghton and Hancock, I believe. Doug Garrow's club, you know you're going to have to work. They don't have, and I don't know how many teams statewide actually have the dynamic scores anymore. I know me and some uh, people with the, in the uh, NAHL are talking. The senior class in the state of Michigan is good, but a lot of teams don't have just that lights out offensive player. Marquette, you got to work. I, you you got to work them. They're solid defensively. They just don't give nothing up. Whoever plays them, out of, and they're in a different region than our region. More than likely, Marquette should, although Sue's pretty good. But you're, whoever comes out in that quarterfinal game, it's not going to be a shootout. This will be a one or two goal game no matter who wins because, again, and they have one advantage for lines. Whether Doug, and Doug Garrow's been known this, what to say, he shrinks the bench as the game goes on, but it's a good team. They're very solid. I, I haven't seen them about a month and a half. I got them twice in the next couple of weeks. Always a pleasure to catch up with this guy. He's got friends all over the state, and certainly he's got friends and us here at State Champs and down here in Trenton. Jimmy, always a pleasure. Always look forward to chatting with you, and I'm sure we'll see you next month at USA Hockey Arena as well. Well, I hope so. It's going to be a little bit tougher getting out of UP now with our teams. More likely I have to go through Marquette, but uh, yeah, I, and I might come down as a spectator, but I'm hoping one of our teams from our area gets down there. I don't know what that place would be without me, Sean. Be, be, be honest with you. I mean, I wonder they got my name on the same spot. Raw from the MH. Well, one, one, I won't, wherever. I, I don't care. Just tell me where the hospitality room is. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Young kindly joining us here on the State Champs Network. And it's time now for our Wall Word update brought to you by our friends at Warrior Hockey. So, Sean, after the MIHL Prep Hockey Showcase, no changes, but we saw some great goaltending play out of the top 10. We sure did. And, and again, without giving away anything. Um, I, I think we also saw a guy who's like firmly sitting at 11 right now. Um, I'm not going to say any names. That's a teaser. But I, in my mind, John, I think there's a, a guy that's firmly sitting at 11 right now. But you, you can't take off guys when they play so well. And I think these guys, each in their own way, 
uh, showed why they deserve to be on this list. But should anybody falter, there is somebody definitely waiting in the wings right now. And I think a general consensus as well that the next guy in is, you'll have to find out. You can cast your vote for the top 10 in the wall award at our website at statechampsnetwork.com. The leading vote getter will never get removed from the top 10. And that was our wall award update brought to you by our friends at Warrior Hockey. As we wrap it up here on Hockey Time, let's talk about a few games that are happening this week. And how about the game on Wednesday between the Bay City Wolves and Saginaw here? Oh, I love it. You know what? Um, you know, number one, it's for a great cause. I mean, let's get that out of the way. Number two, Johnny, um, you know, some dynamic players out there. Uh, you know, I've been a fan of JJ's forever. JJ's another one of those guys. This is his time of year. He's going to get his team going. He always does. Bay City's already going. That should be a dandy. We have a KLA crossover matchup between number six Heartland and number 23 Livonia Stevens. Always seems to be a great game, uh, no matter if it's Heartland up here and Stevenson there or vice versa. I like this Stevenson team. I think Dave's done a really good job coaching them up. I mean, everybody talks about their youth, rightfully so. They only have one senior, but what a test it is against one of the best in the state with Ricky Gadwa and his Heartland squad. On Friday, it's the big one up north. Hancock taking on Houghton. Oh, baby. Can I clone myself? Or just get on a plane and, you know, don't you have a jet? You can just head up there. Maybe somebody can send a plane and pick me up. I Do you like the governor of the Upper Peninsula? Can they make something happen? I wish they could. Please uh, put me up there. But, uh, no, uh, fantastic. Um, I, boy, I'd love to be at that one, uh, you know. The two cities, obviously, uh, separated by the canal up there. It's, it, it, it's going to be awesome. Uh, what an atmosphere I'm sure it'll be. And we head on over to the west side for the game between East Grand Rapids and Forest Hill Central. Oh, baby, that's a good one. No diggity, no doubt. Right? Um, no doubt about that. I think Forest Hill Central did a good job of bouncing back at the showcase. You know, they had a couple losses that left a bad taste in their mouth, uh, but bounce back, beat a really good Lakeland team. So, you know, they'd love nothing more than to kind of flex the muscle. Everybody's talking about the Pioneers right now and for good reason. So uh, that'll be a big test for them. All right, Sean. So in just a couple weeks, it's the playoff. I can't believe it. it I mean, it flies by each and every year, but um, you know, already doing some studying for the regionals and everything, John, it, it, it's going to be fantastic. And um, I, I, I think, as I said earlier, I, I think there are some definite favorites that you can pick out in a couple of the divisions. That doesn't mean the favorite always wins. And Division three is the one where I think you could make a legitimate argument for a few different teams. So it's, it's going to be a heck of a lot of fun. So that is it for another edition of State Champs Hockey Time. So, Sean, what do you always say? We'll see you at the rink. State Champs Hockey Time is presented by Lawrence Technological University. Be curious, make magic. The future of education begins at ltu.edu. State Champs Hockey Time is also presented by Alto Equipment, Michigan's number one construction equipment provider, proudly representing the industry's top brands. Get the right equipment for your project every time with Alto Equipment. Warrior Hockey is proud to support Michigan High School Hockey Player and Goalie of the Year awards. Warrior Hockey is made for this. The Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association, celebrating the 50th anniversary of high school hockey in Michigan. For schedule, scores, and standings, go to the hub, mihshockeyhub.com. The Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. And Michigan Army National Guard, proud sponsor of the Michigan High School Athletic Association.